So we got called to a job, middle of the day, gentleman with chest pain, really nice part of the world, very nice house, very nice job, very nice family. He'd been suffering with chest pain for some time and he was very worried. <clears throat> so what we do is sort of deflect the conversation, we'll do our checks, we'll do an ECG. And while I was chatting to this guy, I says, what are your interests, mate? And he just says, oh, I like um, music. I says, oh, what, what kind of music? I've got, uh, and at that time, I had five guitars, none of which I could play. And he said, oh, I've, I've got my own little music studio. And he did. And it was full of guitars, pianos, just absolutely beautiful. And then I says, you, you mentioned two interests. What you should, what's your other interest? And he says, well... If you go with my wife upstairs, she'll show you something that you'll absolutely love. I'm thinking, oh, Cat might not be a big fan of this, but in for a penny. So his uh, lovely wife took me upstairs and on the landing, what's this? Yeah, so if uh, any fans of Doctor Who out there, you need to get one of these on your landing. The guy was okay in the end. Of all the doors that I've come across that didn't open, or the patient refused to open it and the police were required to open it in their manner one door in particular was very easy to negotiate this one and because I did a lot of voluntary work for the emergency services both down in Dartford for Darrant Valley Hospital uh, for St John Ambulance and for the ambulance service we used to meet an awful lot of people sorry I got the sun in your eyes there we used to meet an awful lot of people who used to dress up in costumes the really big ones that you see like in the London Marathon really heavy, really sweaty. So I met a lot of people who dressed up in costumes. Sometimes you were lucky and got to see a proper costume. Happy days. When I was down in Dartford, colloquially named as Dirtford by the locals, I was working as PTS. I had seven months PTS, patient transport service, before I went frontline. And we had to go pick this lady up. And this lady had um, early onset dementia and other medical problems. And she had difficulty uh, mobilising. But due to the fact that we had a small vehicle, getting a chair inside was a little bit of a, a faff. 
and although she was having mobility problems she was confident if somebody helped her so I stepped forward and said I will be your Zimmer frame and you walk with me for support so we walked up the ramp and basically you hold the upper arms of the patient you rock them one side and the leg that lifts off the floor you then pull and that leg falls forward and then you plant that foot then you rock to that side swing the other leg forward and plant that foot I think you get the drift so we started moving towards the front of the ambulance and as we're walking I felt a thud on the top of my boot so I thought oh, she's she's just dropped her handbag we've we've got to keep walking I need to sit her down then after about two more steps she stopped and her shoulder started shaking and then she started laughing and then that laughing got louder and I'm thinking what on earth's going on? What have I missed here? Anna says, we'll call her Doris again. I think everybody's going to get called Doris. I said, Doris, why are you laughing? And she said, my boob's fallen out. And I'm like, what? And the carer said she's got a false boob. I went, oh, okay. I think I know where that is. So I looked down and across the top of my boot was a false boob. So the carer picked up the boob, threw it back in the patient's bra, and we could continue to the seat. False boob. Throughout my time with the ambulance service, I used to work with some great crewmates, many of which were ex-military. So if you're ex-military out there, thank you for your service. I met a lot of Second World War veterans, those who were involved in the D-Day landings. Brave, very brave. I went to a little old lady's house, very, very tiny lady, bed bound. She had a carer with her and she was just curled up in what we called a fetal position. She wasn't in any pain, she was just an old lady. But around the walls of the bedroom was all pictures of women in the RAF. And there was a very large long picture with look like hundreds of personnel and right in the center in front of a large bomber might have been a Lancaster I can't remember was this lady with wings on and braid ribbons and the lady in the bed was the same lady Absolutely impressive. I was awestruck. And one of the things that I used to ask ex-military, and it wasn't, have you killed anybody? It was, how did you deal with a ballistics injury? And I got told by many military medics how they dealt with it. And I'm so glad in 10 years I never had to deal with a ballistics injury. Although we were trained to cope with it, I never saw one. But what I did see, quite strangely, and it came up on the computer, snake bite. So of course you think of the, the snakes in England, grass snakes, adders, and I'm thinking, oh, adder. Let's uh, pop along. We went southbound on the A1 to go to this snake bite. And it was a young lady who'd been bitten by a snake. And as I said in previous videos, when more information comes through, the information is updated on the computer. And then we got told it was a lemon python. 
So straight away my crewmates started googling lemon python and they're quite large. So when we got to the location of the snake bite, we both sat in the vehicle and this chap ran out and says, uh, she's in here. To which we both replied, well, where's the bloody snake? <laughs> Apparently he'd got it back in its cage. It was a pet snake. So, okay, let's go deal with this. Unfortunately, these are, I think the constrictors, they haven't really got teeth. They've got rows of very, very tiny teeth and basically they just grip and then coil their coils around the victim and give them a good squeeze. So we asked this young lady, well, how did he get this snake off? And outside every cage was a little bottle of vodka. What, did he get it drunk? But apparently if you pour vodka on their nose, they're not a big fan and they let go. So she had this most perfect injury to the fleshy part of her hand and no lasting problems. And I never went to another snake bite. Yeah. Before I forget, I should have mentioned this, but the lady on the photograph, I don't know the rank that she held, but she looked very important. And apart from the guys as well that were in the D-Day landings, God bless you guys, I also met a guy that was in the Vietnam War, and also a really old gentleman, and he was a hundred when I met him, who received the Legion d'honneur which I believe is the highest award given in France. So I've been quite lucky meeting these brave people. Yeah. So this post, the top of this post was the ground level in 1850 and then this post, cat's going to demonstrate by getting up alongside it, you might not be able to see the date but that's 1848 right at the top, that was ground level 1848, 1860, 1870. 75, 1892, and, this and has been then raised on a plinth and that's been raised on a plinth. So the lowest point in England. Yeah, I'm still above water though. <laughs> glug 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 glug. Bit of a history lesson here, one of the original charcoal burners, certainly not working at the moment. So peaceful here, really really peaceful. Apart from cat clicking a camera and spoiling the noise, or spoiling the silence should I say. <laughs> 